Hello, my name is Darren McKnight, Senior Technical Fellow for Leo Labs, and I have the pleasure of starting off the session on activating active debris removal. The vast majority of the debris generating potential in low Earth orbit for LEO resides in a few hundred massive derelict objects, often abandoned in tight altitude clusters that amplify the probability of significant debris generating event. As early as 2000, all of the major spacefaring agencies identified this pool of several hundred objects. This list provided a clear story, but it did not provide actionable priorities. Recent analysis by a team of 19 global experts from 13 countries reduced this longer list into the top 50 prioritized list. The top 20 objects were 20 SL-16 rocket bodies, 18 of which are centered at 840 kilometers altitude. As a side note, the top 50 objects were roughly 80% abandoned before 2000, roughly 80% rocket bodies, and roughly 80% of Russian Soviet origin. Further, this year, a new analytic tool was created, the LEO Collision Risk Continuum, which examined over 400,000 conjunction data messages, or CDMs, issued by LEO Labs during the last half of 2020. These CDMs included all objects against all objects. The search was not limited to the riskiest conjunctions for the largest objects only. We let the data select the worst offenders. The probability of each conjunction was multiplied by the total mass of the objects included. This served as a surrogate for consequences if a collision ha happened to occur. This total mass involved in each close approach um, was used to obtain a risk value. For this analysis of all objects in the space catalog, the top four items were again SL-16 rocket bodies. Further, the analysis clearly showed what had been hypothesized in the past from previous analyses. The greatest risk to future debris growth is from potential collisions between massive derelicts abandoned decades ago, not the small, agile, newly deployed small sats populating constellations. Further, there are two altitude regimes that continue to rise up in all analyses as potential hotspots for future debris growth and therefore targets for ADR. These two regions are centered around 840 kilometers and 975 kilometers. While active debris removal, or ADR, as a remediation option is rapid and permanent, there is some benefit to consider the general category of remediate in orbit to work cooperatively with ADR. This may be even more relevant for the most massive objects such as the SL-16s as their removal would definitely require controlled reentry to assure limiting the probability of ground casualty to below the threshold of one in 10,000. Just-in-time collision avoidance, or JCA, and nanotugs are examples of remediate in orbit options. JCA calls for the use of either laser impulse or interaction with a ballistically launched cloud to nudge one of the two derelict objects from an imminent collision. If a JCA solution could be developed that was much less expensive and responsive than ADR and conjunction dynamics accuracy improved, this solution might become a valuable complement to ADR for the most massive of derelict objects. Similarly, a nanotug is simply a small, probably a 6U CubeSat system that could be attached to an abandoned derelict object. The nanotug comprises accelerometers, electric thrusters, GPS receiver to, in essence, bring the derelict object back to life by providing the capability to perform collision avoidance maneuvers as necessary. We are decades beyond the point of urgency of cleaning up mass deposit in LEO decades ago whose collisional churning may adversely affect commercial and national security space system for decades to come. This is especially true for constellations of satellite whose collective exposed area will make them uniquely susceptible to lethal non-trackable debris. So as the popular press and regulators seem to be fixated on constellations as a catalyst for reduced space safety, I propose that the constellations will end up being the victims of decades of complacency in debris remediation and debris mitigation policy and regulation. Thank you for your time.